Hi everyone, in this video, I'll show how to backup and restore your computer using Clonezilla without using a USB drive. Clonezilla is free open source imaging software that will allow you to backup and restore your computer. Normally you'll need a DVD or USB drive to boot Clonezilla, but I'll be doing this without either. So I'm going to be downloading Clonezilla, going to clonezilla.org, and then I'm going to go to download. And then I'm going to download the stable version. And here it's asking to select the CPU architecture, AMD64, and the file type, there's zip and ISO. I'm going to use zip for this video. And then download. Once downloaded, go into your downloads folder. And there's my file. And I'm going to extract it. Extract all. Extract. All right, and there are my extracted contents. Now I'm going to open up Disk Management. Start Disk Management. In Disk Management, it will show all my disks and my partitions. And so on my first disk here, disk zero, it's 476 gigabytes, and it's my SSD. And it's where I have Windows installed, and I'll be backing up my entire SSD drive here. And disk one, it's about 224 gigabytes, and it's my NVMe drive. It's my second disk, and it's where I'm going to be storing my backup. And I have here a drive, my D drive. It's called data. So this is where I'm going to be storing my backup. And so going back to my first disk here, where I have Windows. So there's an EFI partition. It's 100 megabytes. And there's my C drive. If I go to properties, it's using about 80 gigabytes. And then there's my recovery partition. So in total, it's using 80 gigabytes. Now ideally, I like to have twice as much free space, or at least 1.5 times that much on my second disk. So 160 gigabytes, or at least 120 gigabytes. And so if I go to my D drive here, there's 164 gigabytes free, so more than enough free space. Now when the backup is done, it will not use this total amount, but it's to be safe when Clonezilla performs its backup operations. And when finished, the backup size will most likely be less than 80 gigabytes, as it's going to be compressed. Now if you don't have enough free space available, and you try to do a backup, it will fail, and it will get an error that there's not enough space. So going back into Explorer, and so I've extracted the clones of the live contents here. But in order to boot from it, I'll have to make it available during boot. So I'll be creating a new partition on disk one so I can boot from it. And so it's just to check how much space it's using. So it's using 461 megabytes, about 500 megs there. Cancel. Go back into disk management. And then I'm going to select disk one. I'm going to shrink it by 500 megabytes, shrink. All right, there's my unallocated space. Right click, new simple volume, next, next, next. And then the file system will be FAT32. And then the label, I'll label it as Clonezilla. Next, finish. All right, and so there's my new partition on drive F. And I'm going back into Explorer. I'm going to copy all the contents. I'm going to go into the F drive and paste. All right, everything has been copied over. And going back into disk management. And your BIOS should be able to see this partition and be able to boot from it. But if not, it may be because it's seen as a basic data partition and it may need to be seen as an EFI system partition. So I'm going to change that. So to do that, I'm going to go into disk part, start, type in disk part, and run as administrator. Yes, and type in list disk. So I'm going to go into disk one, select disk one, and then type in list part for list partitions. And then it's partition number two, the 500 megabyte partition. So I'm going to select it, select partition two, and type in help set ID. And I'm going to type in set ID equals, I'm going to scroll up, 
can get the EFI system partition value in hex, copy it, and paste. Enter. All right, and so we can see this part successfully set the partition ID, and it's seen here in disk management as well. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled, and if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm going to do a one time boot into the installation partition. It's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that? Go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. All right, it's booted up into the partition. And we see here grub for clonezilla. And then so I'm going to select the first option, clonezilla live, enter. All right, and we get to choose language screen. And you can use the arrow keys to move up and down. And you can use tab to cycle through the fields. And then enter. And then choose keyboard layout. I'm going to keep it, OK. All right, and we're at the start clones of the screen here. And from here, you can use the mouse to move around and also as well as to select the options. So I'll start clones of the, OK. And then at this screen here, asks what you want to do. And so I'm selecting the first option, device image, work with disks or partitions using images. OK. Here it says before cloning, you have to assign where the clones of the image will be saved to or read from, and we will mount that device or remote resources as slash home slash part image. The clones of the image will be saved to or read from this directory. All right, so I'm going to be selecting the first option, local dev. So it's a local device, which is my second disk, my NVMe drive. So I'll hit OK or hit Enter. It's just a screen that says if you're going to be attaching a USB device, such as a USB hard disk to use, and then it asks to insert it and then wait about five seconds before pressing enter. But for me, I'm not using a USB hard disk, so I'm just hit enter. And here it does a scan and it shows the available disks on this machine. So it's found my two disks, my NVMe drive and my SSD. So that's good. And I'm going to hit control C to exit. And at this screen here, it says that it needs to mount a device uh, slash home slash part image so that we can read or save the image in slash home slash part image. So for me, this is on my NVMe drive. This is on my data drive or the D drive that was seen in Windows. So essentially, it's the first option here. Here, it asks if I want to check and repair the file system before mounting. And this is going to be using FS check. So it's only for certain file systems and not for NTFS. So I'm going to be doing no, no file system check. So enter. Here, Clonezilla asks for the directory to use to store the image. So I'm just going to be using the root. So I'm not going to be making any changes. So I'll just hit done, enter. And here it shows it's mounted my D drive. So enter. And the screen here is choose the mode to run the following wizard about the advanced parameters. And I would select beginner, makes it simpler. Here it asks what I want to do. If I want to save disk or save parts, save partitions, I want to save the entire disk. OK. Here it asks to input a name for the saved image to use. My computer backup. OK. Here it's asking to select the local disk as the source, which is my first disk. OK. And here it's asking for the compression option, ZST DMT. OK. And here it asks if I want to do a file system check. And I don't want to do one, so I'll skip it. OK. And after the image is saved, do I want to check if the image is restorable? So yes, I want to check the saved image. I want to verify that it is OK. And here it asks if I want to encrypt the image. So I always encrypt my backups. So I'm going to go and select encrypt the image. OK. And here it asks if I want to copy the log files to Clonezilla Live USB drive if it exists in this machine. So I'm not using a USB drive, but the log files will be stored in the partition that I created for Clonezilla. 
So yes, I want to copy the log files. And it asks here what I want to do after everything is finished. So I always pick the first option, choose reboot shutdown when everything is finished. So I can see if the backup completed as expected. OK. Enter. And here is asking for the passphrase that I'll use to encrypt my image. And ask to re-enter. All right, and here it's asking, are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I want to save my entire hard disk. So yes, I want to do that. All right, and it's backing up my drive here. And this will take a little bit of time to complete, depending on how fast your computer is and how much data it has to back up. All right, the backup has completed, and now it's going to be checking the image. So this will also take a little bit of time, depending on how big was your image and how fast is your computer. All right, the check has completed, and the partitions are restorable, so that's good. And now I'm going to hit Enter. All right, and here it asks what I want to do. And normally, I would just reboot my computer as I'm done the backup. But now I'm going to be showing how to do a restore of that image that I just took. So I'm going to be selecting this option, rerun one, which will go back to the beginning. And so I have the start clonezilla screen again. So I'm going to start clonezilla and selecting the first option here, work with disks or partitions using images. OK. And then local dev, use my local device. Yep. Hit enter. And then it sees my two disks. Control C. And here it asks to mount the partition with where my backup is so I can read it. So it's my NVMe drive, partition number one, the data drive. OK. And then no file system check. OK. And here it asks for the directory for the clones of the image repository. So this is the directory for my repository. And this may be confusing because my backup is here. But it's not asking me to select my backup. It's just asking me to select the directory where my image repository is, which is the root. So tab, tab, done. Press Enter to continue. Yep. And then now I'm going to go through the wizard. So beginner, OK. And then in this screen, I'm going to be selecting restore disk, OK. And then so it's asking for the image file to restore. So there it is, labeled as my computer backup. Yep, that's the one. OK. And it's asking the target disk to be overwritten, which is my first disk, SDA. OK. And it asks about the partition table to use. So I'm going to be using the partition table from the image. OK. And it's asking here if I want to check the image. I've already checked it, so I don't need to check it again. So I'm going to go to No. OK. And here it's asking if I want to copy the log files. Yep, I'll copy them. OK. And here it asks what I want to do after it's finished. So I'm going to be selecting the same option as before. Choose, reboot, shutdown, etc. when everything is finished. OK. Enter. And here it's asking for the passphrase to decrypt the image. So I'll put it in. So it decrypted my image. And here it's asking for confirmation to restore the image to my drive here. So yes. And it's asking one more time for confirmation. Yes. All right, and it's going to be restoring the image to my first disk. So this will take a little bit of time to complete. All right, and the restore has completed. I'm going to hit Enter. And now it's asking me what I want to do. So I'm going to reboot and I'm going to go into Windows. All right, and I'm back in Windows. The restore worked as expected. And I'm going to go into Explorer. And if I go into my D drive, and so there's the backup that I took. And there are all the files for my backup and going out of it and going back. And so during the backup and restore, I had to create log files. And if I try to go into the F drive, it says I don't have permissions. And the reason why is because 
it's seen as an EFI system partition. So I'm just going to set it back as a basic data partition. I'm going to go into disk part, run as administrator, yes, list my disk, select disk one, list my partitions, select partition two, the 500 megabyte partition, type in help set ID, and type in set ID equals, I'm going to scroll up, and looking for the basic data partition value in hex, copy and paste, enter. So it has been set. And now I'm going to reboot my computer. And I'm back. And going into the F drive now, you can go into it. And then there are the log directories. So the first one here is for the backup. And then the second one is for the restore. So if I go into it, here are all the log files that I created. And then so if you had an issue doing your backup or restore, you can take a look at the log files just to see what happened. For example, part clone SDA3. So we can see at the bottom here, part clone successfully cloned the device, my partition SDA3, which is my C drive, my NTFS partition. So I'm going to close. I'm going to open up disk management. And so the F drive here with clonezilla, I no longer need it. So then I can delete it. Yes. And then now I'm going to extend my D drive. Next, next, finish. And that's it. That's how you can back up and restore your computer using Clonezilla without using a USB drive. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.